you don't need to break it down to the mass sense to get down to that level. Um, no one in the industry ever talks about the, how many farads and capacitor bankers. Right? We always talk about these things, inductors and capacitors, in terms of their forms. Okay? So um, you know, just keep that in mind. We either look at them in terms of bars or we look at them in terms of ohms. So we have our reactants uh, JXO. TA is still on vacation. Uh, it's going to hold office hours right after the labs from noon to 1.30. Okay. So she'll meet in 2503, so right after the lab, if you want to stick around and ask her questions about homework at the labs, so don't do that. Um, homework number one is due on Tuesday. And be sure to take your quiz. Okay. Um,
discuss in terms of impedance or can you discuss in terms of the amount of power that it demands? Okay, so we'll see theta all over the place, it's the same theta. Okay. <coughs> all right, so what is our, um, what is our angle, our, our range for um, theta? I chatted about this on my uh, Wednesday, Tuesday, I chatted about this. Is our range on? Yeah, negative 90 minutes. Okay. Um, and so we can look at our complex plane again. And let's note that the right hand side is where our impedances reside. So that's the real part, Z. And the imaginary part, Z. Okay. And if I'm in the upper plane, So this inductive node load is also known as a leading or lagging. 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 Right, so capacity is leading. Right, so what is leading what? What is lagging what? generator, for instance, you'll see a nameplate, a, a volt amp nameplate. Okay? It's capable of putting out this many volt amps. Why not watts? Why not express a generator in terms of watts? What can a generator do for us? Well, because we don't know how much current we're going to need, just depending on the current that we're needing, the watts will be different, but the voltage yeah. is The constant. voltage is going to be constant, right? So whenever you're dealing with a power system, the voltage is nearly constant. Nameplate values, um, these nameplates, the stamp on values that you see on a piece of equipment, um, are the, basically the maximum that you can extract. I don't know how the damage will go on the transfer. Um, and you'll see that in terms of volt amps for a generator. Generators produce real power, but they can also produce reactive power. In fact, they can be set up to produce purely reactive power. And hence, they're not expressed in terms of watts, but they're expressed in terms of volt amps, in case you want a, um, a low Um, this isn't sufficient information to um, to express a load. Um, there's another thing that's needed, um, and that is you also need to have a power factor. Okay. 
seeing power factors lowercase pf, is that something slightly different, or is it, does it matter? There's actually several different power factors. We'll get into that later. Oh. I capitalize it, and sometimes it's lowercase. I saw the book that keeps it coming. Yeah. yeah, so it's coming there, because I don't think there's a standard on it. Um, so power factor, if I just throw in, you know, minus 45 degrees, I'm going to get 0.7. If I put in 45 degrees, I'm going to get 0.7. Uh, so this is really important when you are talking about power factor, and you have to discuss it in terms of whether it's mean or mine. I've also yeah. seen it where they give you just a positive number, but it will actually tell you it's the lagging or the exactly. mean power factor. And so you always have to give that second bit, okay? If you say your power factor is 0.7, I'm going to get my points or you're going to have to do something. Um, they're going to guess it's inductive because it's a power system, but you do have to express power factor of 0.45 being power factor of 0.7 lagging, okay? Always conclude, conclude that second part because it tells whether it's inductive or capacitive. The problem is you can't get that information from the calculation. Um, you take the power factor angle, you throw it with the cosine, uh, it pops out as a positive number. So you, you don't, you have to intuitively know or keep track of what kind of load you're dealing with. Okay? So you have to add that leading and lagging in there. It's, it's, it's a problem. Uh, I remember in circuit class, there is uh, another way to get the, the power factor. There are a couple of expressions. I'm going to show you uh, what the power factor actually um, expresses. This is the definition of it. Relating to the power factor angle. I didn't tell you that was power factor angle. So, the power factor angle is theta, and the power factor is theta. Okay, so we have power factor angle of theta. I'm going to go back here in a second and uh, show you what the power factor is actually telling us. Okay, uh, we know we have this relationship between power factor and power factor angle, but what does it actually mean? Okay. Um, So um, there's our power factor, right? So the power factor is telling us how much real power there is in the load uh, with respect to its total magnitude. Okay. More often than not, like I mentioned earlier, we're dealing with reactive power. Um, S over theta. Uh, S raising to theta. Um, So if I have, um, let's give you an example, uh, Bonneville Power Administration requires um, their power factor um, on their transmission lines to be 0 0.97 lagging. Right, so they set the power factor equal to 0 0.97 lag. Okay. Um, so if I have 100 megawatts running down the line, how many of those megawatts?
he still has Fahrenheit Mars on him. Um, but you're mostly looking at real time. All right, so it's really kind of giving you a sense of how much of the opacity of a line is being, consumed, being used to real power. Right? So that's 0.97 if you're living a lot of real power. Um, typical loads are between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9, 0 0.95, something like that. Right? Lagging, typically. Right? Um, So let's say I have uh, 277 volts across this load, and that load is pulling 5 kW and zero bars. Right. My line is uh, J 1.3 ohms and uh, 0 0.5 ohms. Right. Um, what's my power factor? That's not all the information I need. I need something else for that. It's a phaser, right? Uh, I've got a magnitude. Is there a phaser specified? <laughs> phaser yeah, you can take the liberty to make that our reference. Right? Okay. Did you say that because of the power factor too? Um, no, I didn't. I just said it was uh, we would have it down to the 277 left blank. I don't think that's the only voltage that's given in the system. Let's use that as a reference. Okay. All right, so we do need.
shield because it's my line will keep it away. Uh, the phase voltage is always smaller. Um, so next one up. So, 480 slash 277. Right, so this is a, an industrial voltage. Okay, so 18 amps full in here. Um, So what I'm going to show you here is the, the problem with bars, um, because there's a solution. Um, so we're pulling 18 amps, um, and we're 3.6% above rated. This is a 274, 480, 277 volt system. We want to deliver 277 to the load. We have to increase this voltage over here um, up 3.6%, which is fine. Um, this is very common. So you have a long roll feeder. You have lots of loads on them. early part, the closer part to the substation will have a higher voltage. And then as you move along, that voltage drops and drops and drops because of the current moving across the transmission line. As long as it's staying within plus or minus 10%, um, utility is meeting its obligations. Okay. So it typically start out high, above 5% above uh, nominal, and then it'll drop by the end to 5% below nominal. Okay. Um, so I'm going to repeat. It's 2.71. <coughs> it's not yet. Yeah, the power factor is sinusoidal, so it's not much change for a while, then it drops off. It's, it's not <coughs>
percentage on that, so 310 minus 277, 33 divided by 11.9? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, the reason I did this example is to highlight some of the problems you have when you have a lot of large systems. Right? Um, consider you're building very large systems. Okay, this is uh, key when you're very expensive. Everything's very expensive. You have to hire linemen to do this work. Um, and so in terms of this, you want to move as much revenue grade power and revenue grade electricity as possible. And that's typically. Sizing means costs go up. Okay, so it's best not to move bars. We don't want to move them. We need them, but we don't want to move them over long distances. Sure. Um, I might be using my calculator wrong, but how did we get to 26? Or is it just using 5 kilowatts and then uh, plus uh, 5? It's minus. Yeah, it's minus. It is minus. Uh, but it's uh, 5. Even when I do that, I'm still getting 18 for some reason. So I might just be typing it on my calculator. Okay. Yeah, the previous you got 18. So um, bars are needed, but um, we can't eliminate them, but we can um, compensate, okay? Um, so power factor bars, um, issues related to these things. If you have, um, if you're moving a lot of bars, you're going to have voltage regulation issues. What I mean by that is, let's say um, I am holding this at 310, so I can get 277 here. Okay? As soon as I take this load off, what's my terminal voltage going to be? Okay, I have to put a switch on this. I open that switch. Previously, I was supplying, I, I want 277, and so I'm holding 310 here. So it's going to be here 310. And all of a sudden, we're at 310 at this terminal, right? That's voltage regulation. And as this load comes on and off, See this voltage go up, it's going from 277 to 310 back down. It's a wild swing, 12%. Okay? Uh, so that's what voltage regulation is discussing. It's really it's running, the current running through this line and causing delta B to occur in the load changes. Okay? It's a bad thing because we want to have a very consistent voltage on the line. All right? Another issue is uh, we want to make sure that our transmission line capacity. Transmission line ampacity. Ampacity is the capacity of a line. 
right? So uh, that's your I squared R losses. Right? So if you're moving current to support bars, um, that current is going to be um, contributing to loss in the lines. I'd rather have losses that were associated with me making money, generating revenue, than to have <coughs> losses associated with supporting bars which are not built. Okay. Um, so consider, I mean, this. rather have this volt amp capacity lined up, zero phase angle, by the way, theta. <coughs> rather have that up here, which means producing as few bar bars as possible so we can push as much power as possible. Generators are designed to convert some sort of chemical or gravitational or nuclear energy into electromechanical energy. We don't want to have them sitting around underexcited or overexcited. Okay. So, Bars are needed. Right? Bars are uh, parasitic in transmission lines. They'll always be there. There's always going to be capacitors between lines and lines and lines and ground. Uh, long transmission lines will look like gigantic inductors. Um, motors and generators will always demand bars to support magnetic fields. Um, ballasts and old T8 lighting, T5 lighting will cool bars that are lagging. New ballasts.
a line diagram equivalent of what's going on. Okay. Alright, so notice we didn't uh, go into this motor whatever it is and remove the coil, but rather we're providing QC locally to compensate. Okay. Um, looking at this from your perspective, let's say we have our Compensated uh, individually, like come with compensation, or would you actually just compensate the entire facility? Um, so there's a bunch of different ways to do this. If you have a if you have a power pack problem, um, you can the utility one of those, uh, and they will um, they'll, they'll basically give you a surcharge. Your power pack sucks. So at that point, you can take a look at that cost and what's going to look like on a yearly basis or a monthly basis, and weigh that against a capital upgrade for the capacity. Okay. So make an economic decision about whether to install it. Okay. If so, you put it in the service companies, not at the individual machine. So typically, the machines themselves don't come with compensation capacitors at any point. But rather, that's done by the facilities engineer based on Also done. We also have compensation at substations um, for boosting voltage. Um, we'll talk about the compensation power pack correction and all that stuff. 
process of compensating more and more and more capacitors, the more it's on the soil, the more capacitors don't get you a linear response. Right. Um, so we're going to shoot to 0.85. You get above that, the utility is going to stop charging us. Again, you give us some breathing room to get down to 0.75. Right. So we'll go to 0.85 and get rid of the penalty and not buy any of the capacitors. Okay. So how would we go about doing that?
are we done? This is what we need, right? So how do we go from what we have to what we need? How do I relate QT? These ends here. Well, we already did it. It's 5K bar plus QC. And what are we expecting from the magnet to sign on QT? Minus. Minus. It's faster, right? Yeah. All right, so rearranging. That's how you do your basic computation calculation. All right. Um, so let's go over the advantages of AC and then I'm going to do an example that's similar to you. Can you clarify? Yeah. Let's capacitors produce bars. They consume bars. Capacitors are producers. AC. So the first advantage um, um, is the comparison between single phase AC and three phase AC. Anybody know where the world's first um, AC transmission line is located? High voltage, 13 volt, 13,000 volts. Transmission lines in New York. Oh, would that be from the dam that Tesla, the, the Tesla built? No, 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 no. No, no. That came later. He didn't build it. Well, yeah. well I mean, his Who's stuff involved? was his stuff was licensed. Yes. Yes. He didn't make any money. What's that? Is that the plug? That's a very bit close to the plug. In Colorado? He's close to so far. It's in Oregon City? It is Oregon City, yeah. So the line went from Oregon City. Germans built one 100 miles long, 
here, um, let's say we have that old single phase one, um, two wires, right? On the name of something they turn on. Um, and let's say we wanted to triple it. Well, one option is to add two more identical transmission lines, right? Okay, so I can triple it by tripling the amount of capital I'm investing. Right? Or I can be clever about it, but in a wide configuration, a double configuration. Uh, so instead of being six lines, assume it's a balanced load, but what if, like, there's a fault condition, and then all of a sudden it's, you do need that neutral line, right, or? You don't. Even in a... No, the current is closed. Oh, you know what you're doing now, right? Um, you have a fault on here, you have the neutral here, um, your fault current's are going to run you know, cooler on the other two lines. Right. Well, it'll come from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you've got IL times 1 plus J0 degree F0 plus, uh, plus minus 0 0.5 minus going 0 0.87 plus minus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.87 equals 90 minutes. So, what is I get? So there are, there's often something, but it doesn't need to be the same gauge. It can be much smaller uh, than, uh, <coughs> than the other three. Okay. All right, so another uh, nice thing about AC is that the power is constant. Right? In a single phase system, um, like in a 
based on the associate open lab, you have uh, power that doing this, right? So it's got some sort of average value of PT. And it might have a little bit of reactive force, which is the negative power, but it's also just a back and forth. Right? So you can apply that to the motor and you get vibration, right? So you be vibrating at 120 hertz, right? Um, because the power going into it is actually pulsating at 120 hertz. Okay? When you have three phase, um, you have three of these sinusoids, and they add up just like we saw here with the current. They add up and they cancel. likewise. You might if I don't write it down. Yeah. Okay. Add up all the cosines, they cancel just like we saw over here. Right? Add up all the sines, they cancel. Right? So P total, which you might think is a function of time, is equal to PA plus PB plus PC. Right? Which turns out to just be three times P5, which is equal to P total. The same P's and P5 we saw earlier. So your power flow is continuous in a three-phase system. Now still you have your electrical motor, you're actually applying it in some oscillating pulsation, but nonetheless the power is constant. Okay. All right, um, the next issue, um, advantage, is uh, comparison between AC and DC. Um, <clears throat> so Pearl Street Station, Paper insulation and whale oil, um, <laughs> and kind of hacking it together. Um, and but so he couldn't go very far. He had to make a copper bigger and bigger, which then go further and further. Was that voltage dropped? Every voltage time. Time. Yeah. So um, the solution to eliminate that voltage drop. Step up or step down voltages. And likewise, what happens at the same time is you're stepping down versus up your currents. Right? Going back to this apparent power, power calculation. So if I bring my voltage up, my current drops down. Okay. Aren't subsaking basically a form of transform? 
Why do we do this is well we have two problems inside each one of these transmission lines. We have uh, resistance from which we get P loss um, I square R. Okay, and then from the reactants more so than the resistance, um, you have a delta V. Or the delta V appears across here, but it's mostly due to the reactants. Um, this would be uh, three to five times larger in magnitude than the resistance. Okay. So um, this delta V is proportional to the current. So if we want to minimize our losses and we want to minimize the voltage drops, um, we can step this voltage up and drop the voltage, drop that current down. Could that also be overcome with shorter transmission lines? What's that? Could that also be overcome with shorter transmission lines? Yeah, but you got to get the power. I mean, yes, you can generate locally, uh, but this is the cheapest way to generate power. You can move your generation. Because of like environmental concerns with, with like no, because it's land. And no, it's just equipment scales. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It gets a hell of a lot cheaper. <laughs> it costs you know, two bucks per, per per watt to heat to build a gas plant. Um, if you don't subsidize, let's see, like a backup generator that costs you ten to fifteen dollars per each watt. Again, it's a cost balance. So this flow is cheaper than that requires this transmission line. Um, right away, engineering hours, and so it all comes down to balance of costs. Um, and providing reliability and safety and making this stuff as cheap and sustainable as possible. All right, um, so let's go with an example that is similar to the city. So let's say we have an industrial customer or a utility or check out our customers, which is a common thing. Um, we have some sort of industrial customer. And they have the following. Right? They have uh, 40 little tiny 50 horsepower motors. Got a 
seven ton AC um, that has a coefficient of performance of 1.1 and it has a power factor of uh, 0 0.8. This is all information gleaned from what's called the, the nameplate. You walk up to the machine, look at the little pad, and you pull this information on. Okay. 87% of what? What's that? Efficiency. terms up here that um, I'm not familiar with, so I want to make sure I hit on those before you guys try to start doing the homework on Monday night. <laughs> so let's start out with the, the 50 horsepower motors. All right. <coughs> Is this mechanical power or electrical power? Mechanical, mechanical power. power. Okay. Um, what does that really mean here? It's like current lag. Yeah, it's just expressed in percentage form, so we get it just written as a 0 0.75 lag. <coughs> All right, so sometimes you see that. It's pretty strange. And then 87% efficient. Um, what is that symbol? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, two more terms we want to hit before 
miles per hour. But the air conditioners aren't rated at 7 tons per hour. Air conditioner wouldn't be as high as 7 tons per hour. What's that? Sense. The air conditioner wouldn't be rated as, as a 7 ton per hour air conditioner. They just call it 7 ton. They call it 7 tons, yeah. Yeah, 7 ton unit. Okay, alright, so that gets your tonnage. Inversely true in like trying to convert thermal energy to electrical energy yes. to be which is highly inefficient. Yeah, which is why like a Borman coal plant is a thermal efficiency of 36 percent. The chemical energy stored within the coal, uh, only 36 percent of that can be converted over to electricity. Probably right, has a theoretical conversion rate of 45 percent, but it's impossible.
okay up here? Um, oh, one thing we need to touch on. Um, you're going to get an apparent power for the motors. You're going to get a parent, an apparent power for the air conditioner. You're going to get an apparent power for the light. That's great. I like it. 